what is up, my fellow Chibits? Today, I'm here to bring all of you the weekly anime review of Dragon Ball Super. I've been very excited to finally see this episode, because with the teaser we got last week, we knew we were getting into a serious arc, and we knew it was going to be focusing around future Trunks. And so many of you have been hyped up to see this episode, and I gotta say, this episode was pretty damn badass and actually has quite the different tone compared to the previous arcs of Dragon Ball Super. Let me kind of dive into that real quick. So when it comes to Dragon Ball Super, a lot of the arcs are very comedy-ish. Like it has this comedy feel to it. And even the resurrection of Frieza, it had some form of comedy vibe to it. Even though there was some dark moments and serious moments, it still was kind of comedy in some ways. And with this, the way this arc is starting out, it is completely different from every arc so far from Dragon Ball Super because you could tell that the tone is drastically different. It's a lot darker because we see deaths, we see the world has been completely destroyed. It reminds me of some of the arcs I saw in Dragon Ball Z. And so I really am actually quite the big fan of this first episode just because I am a big fan of Future Trunks. I've always been fascinated with his timeline and wanting to know more about whatever happens after the the androids were defeated, but also on top of that, I've always just wanted to see him reintroduced into the storyline because he was just such a badass fucking character in the Cell Saga. I love seeing Future Trunks fighting. So seeing him in this episode, it was quite the treat for a fan of Dragon Ball Z. So one thing I need to dive into is the hair color because I have actually not talked about this at all. I haven't made any videos really discussing, you know, his hair color at all. I haven't talked about it. So I'm just going to go in and tell you my thoughts on it because I know many want to know my thoughts on why Trunks' hair is blue. So, my honest opinion on it, I don't really care. I, I, honestly, I, I really do not care. I'm just glad to see future Trunks in the series. I, I'm very happy. Now, I, I have to admit, I am curious. I am very curious of why it is blue. I, I will admit I am curious, but if I don't find out, it, it doesn't bug me at all. Maybe it's just some form of art style change that Toei Animation wanted to do, but if I had to throw anything out there just for fun, like, I'm just throwing it out there just to have a good laugh, I'd say, in before, you know, Super Saiyan Blue Trunks. <laughs> just saying, okay? So, anyways, enough of that. This episode doesn't really give us a whole lot. We just know that the world is in a dire situation to where everybody's pretty much dead. Kind of similar to what happened with the androids in Trunks' timeline before they were defeated. You see how the world is devastated. You see how Trunks is in hiding. He's running. And also, he can't really hide as much as he would want because his key can be sensed. The people can sense his power. So, he can't hide. So Black is hunting him down and trying to kill him for some reason we really don't know. Which that brings us into the main topic of discussion when it comes to this episode. There is a Goku lookalike at the end of this episode. Now I've already seen the cover. I've already seen like the, you know, the cover art of this arc and all that showing Goku with, you know, a fusion earring that's from like Akai. And my overall theories of this, I really... There's multiple things I could possibly say. Maybe there's some form of fusion that happened that caused someone to look like Goku. That, that Just throwing it out there. Maybe so, something happened with Goku's body. Maybe that's another Saiyan that has a similar hair design as Goku. Because we do know that some Saiyans have similar hair designs. So we know for a fact maybe there's a possibility that something else is going on here. I don't believe that's entirely Goku. Because I, I, I just don't. I really don't believe that. But... The main question is, who is Black and why is he doing what he's doing to the entire planet? Why is he, you know, killing everybody? Why is he trying to hunt down Trunks? What is going on? That's my main question throughout this entire episode. And it seems like next week's episode is actually going to focus on the fight between Trunks versus Black. So, I'm excited for that. But, enough of that. I actually want to get into the details that this episode tried to set up. And, the tone. Once again, I gotta go back to that. The tone of this episode really reminded me a lot of the Android Saga, because you see the hopelessness of how Trunks is trying to do anything he can to save his world, but it's already dying and it's pretty much already lost, because as we know, the Dragon Balls are gone. People cannot be wished back in Trunks' timeline. Nobody can. So, it raises many questions when people die in his world. They're gone for good. And we saw Bulma actually die in this episode. She died. Legit fucking died, and so did Mai. And I was 
surprised on that one as well. I thought Mai was going to have more of a role in, you know, this upcoming arc, but apparently not, which I want to get into that. So, I noticed since Dragon Ball Super began and the movie started coming out and stuff, I noticed that we've seen a lot of, like, I guess, pairings going on with Trunks and Mai, and I, I don't know how to feel about that overall, and I don't know how many people feel about, you know, Mai and Trunks being together, but I noticed that there's been a lot of obvious hints that, you know, maybe, though know, the animators or something are trying to ship Mai and Trunks together, because they're always together in some ways, or how we had previously earlier on in Dragon Ball Super, how Mai was kind of acting like the girlfriend of Trunks, so with that, it just makes me wonder if they're trying to let us know something, that Mai and Trunks might get together, and if so... I don't really have much to say. It, it's kind of cute. I, when I saw their dynamic in this episode, it was kind of cute just seeing how they were, you know, sharing food to survive. It was something that I actually really thought was enjoyable, and it felt really real, too, because it wasn't so to say, an embarrassing scene, because I'm so used to when watching an anime, to where if, like, a girl is eating from a guy, or a guy is eating from a girl's food or whatever, usually you see blushing and embarrassment, or slap, or, you know, just something that's very rude and just destroys the entire moment, but it wasn't like that, actually. When you saw Trunks getting offered food by Mai, it's like, hey, it's not dog food and all that, or cat food, I'm like, holy shit, they're really struggling, and then, you know, Trunks is eating it, he eats half, he gives some to the cat, so that would mean that maybe Trunks ate about a quarter of it, and and then he uh, had gave another quarter to the cat, and then he let Mai have, like, half of it. That was a very sweet moment, and she didn't really get embarrassed. I didn't see anything that really made her look embarrassed. She just ate it normally. That really adds more layers to the scene that I appreciate. So, Mai and Trunks. It might be a thing. Mai died, though, in this episode, which makes me sad, because, I, like I said, I was enjoying her character in this episode, and I was remembering why I loved her in Dragon Ball, and then seeing how she's, you know, dead now, I'm like, holy fuck, two characters just dying in one episode, and like I've already said, there's no Dragon Balls in this universe. Remember, Piccolo's dead and all that. Many might forget that, but Piccolo's dead, there's no Dragon Balls, Trunks is like the only one left standing. So... With him being gone, no one is there really to protect anybody. Because, I mean, look, Bulma's dead. She can't make anything anymore. Mai's dead. And then now Trunks leaving, that just leaves the entire world for Black to do whatever he wants. Which, once again, I'm curious exactly what is the motive of Black. Where did he get the fusion, you know, Kai earrings and... Yeah, oh yeah, he only had one on his ear as well. I actually wanted to point that out. He didn't have two, he had only one. So, interesting stuff. So... I gotta say, this episode was very enjoyable. I can't wait to see where it's gonna go. I'm excited. I wonder how Trunks is gonna react when he sees Mai as a kid, when he goes back into the past. So yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. You'll have a wonderful day or night wherever you live. Please be safe. Chibi out.